Hi, my name's Riley, and this is my 1999 GMC Savannah van. This is a cube truck that I'm currently building out. I am in the midway part of my build. I'm actually using a lot of reclaimed material, so I'm going around marketplace and wherever I can find free stuff on the side of the road and basically using it for the materials that it is. And I'm trying to produce a fairly high quality build out of this. Right now I got pretty much a hundred different projects going on at the same time. Ripped off the grill, power steering pump, blah, 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 all the mechanical stuff. I wanted to get hundred percent before I started working on everything, but turns out parts were hard to get. So I started everything else and I'm back on here. So keep on moving on. I got a 16 foot box. So I got lots of space, lots of headroom. So about seven and a half feet and seven and a half or seven feet wide. So cubic feet is a lot. Towards the beginning of my build, I found a trailer for like 500 bucks. So that was awesome. I pulled out like the fridge, the stove, all the electrical stuff, got this door, a bunch of windows. A lot of that I ended up selling off to help pay for the build. I'll show you inside. Cut this door myself, actually straight. I used, uh, it's all 12 volt, but I used a, you know, house box and a house switch. It'll look way nicer as well. All my lights are just regular pot lights. I ran that in the ceiling beforehand and then I stuck a foam up above. It's two inch R10 value. I don't know if I got some off cuts here. This is the stuff. This is what my ceiling is. This is what you see the black is here. Um, I was trying it out. I thought it would look kind of sharp. I All I did is, you know, stuck this up and then the slats I put up is holding up the foam that I painted black. So it gave it that little bit of a contrast. Um, I'm not sure if that's gonna be my finished ceiling yet, but I'm gonna do that for now. The bargain hunter that I am, I found a free couch on Marketplace. I was pretty stoked about it. I really wanted to get the foam out of it, and I was gonna get a reupholstered, blah, 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 but it ended up being a really sick Lazy Boy that I ended up getting. And I ripped the whole thing apart and put it back together again to fit in this section here. I even used the original armrest of the couch itself. So the whole couch is just, uh, more reclaimed materials and underneath is just a whole whack of storage. This is currently where I, you know, put my bits of wood and sawdust for my future composting toilet. Not here. The composting toilet is not in the couch. It's going to go over there. I'll go, I'll go over that later. This is where the bed's going to go. I got a twin going in the back here, a nice big mattress, lots of room for activities. And right here in between, this is like a big pony wall that I built to divide up the kind of living space, the kitchen, and then the bedroom area. Built these stairs going up, so it's nice and easy, you can get in on top of the bed. These are all trim pieces that I um, made from leftover cuts, or off cuts I should say, from this desk that I got. Use a router, table saw, that stuff, so all the pieces are um, routered together and joined up. So that's why I made this flow into here, and this piece flow this way. This is, a, I got a bit of a groove in here. So it's gonna turn into a bit of a shelf. I got this veneer. That's gonna go over the whole thing. But these are gonna go up to here. The trim piece is gonna go up to the ceiling. The truck came with a bunch of um, three quarter inch plywood that I ended up ripping out and reclaimed and used it for a lot of the whole thing. And all the off cuts of that, I ended up kind of gluing together to make this pony wall up. The whole inside of the uh, plywood is hollow. So I can run wires and all that other stuff across Got some up there that's going to be a 12 volt charging station for the phone and the laptops or, you know, if you just want to Netflix and chill. More reclaimed stuff. I found a whole dresser on the side of the road for free, like just a block away. Um, as I was building my pony wall, which is kind of funny how these things kind of manifest, I find. I got these drawers. I ripped them out of the dresser and they fit perfectly in my pony wall. Like they're the perfect size, couldn't be any bigger. And so I got, you know, that's where all my clothes can go and who knows what else, I don't know, sex toys. More storage as well. This is the stairs that I built up, um, up to the bed. And I made this all storage as well inside of the stairwell. This is my kitchen. Made all the cabinets myself. Made them out of just, you know, pieces of plywood. And I guess I, I ripped apart an old really crappy cabinet and modified it to fit these. So this is all just plywood. I wanted to go kind of fancy and obviously whatever shows up on Marketplace, I have to buy it. Cause I'm like, oh, I know what that can be used for. So um, it's kind of questionable. I don't know if tile works inside of a vehicle. I've seen it done here and there. And these are some big pieces. I put up a piece of uh, OSB on the back and it's kind of like loosely screwed in. So it has some play against the body of the vehicle. 
and then I just PL glued them up. I still got to grout it all and to fit it all in the place, but I mean, it's still nice and shiny and it reflects the, like it just makes everything pop. So I'm pretty happy how it looks, but uh, we'll find out in, you know, the trials and tribulations when I take this thing down logging roads. <laughs> That's the really good thing about having a cube truck is that compared to like RVs and trailers and all that stuff, um, instead of wood and staples and nails and screws or glue or whatever the heck, I don't know what RVs are even stuck together with, bubble gum. Um, this thing is, a cube truck's a bit better. It's all solid, you know, nice like probably 16 gauge aluminum on the side, riveted onto steel studs. Uh, the bottoms are, you know, it's welded on there. The whole roof is one solid sheet of aluminum. There's, this thing's not gonna leak ever. It's totally dry until I cut a hole in the roof, which I've been wanting to do. I've been wanting to do uh, a skylight here, but what's been keeping me from doing that was the fact that when I went up there, it was one solid piece of aluminum. I'm like, oh, okay, we'll wait on that one, you know? I wanted to keep kind of the whole thing stealthy, keep the whole van stealthy. And so instead of even cutting a penetration out for my hood fan, I removed the installation in the wall cavity and then I sheet metaled the uh, studs all the way down so that the hood fan plums into the wall and then goes straight down to the floor. And then I have a kick like underneath of the stove kind of down there. So the whole vent system vents out straight down to the bottom of the floor. I was actually kind of worried about how much suction the fan would like replenish the air. So uh, I kind of just did it and hope for, you know, it would work and it does really well actually. So if I light up an incense or something like that, you can, you know, hold it back here and see it sucking up everything. Essentially it has enough suction to suck all the vapors out. Kept the drawers simple. These are all reclaimed drawers here. You can tell this beautiful dovetailing. That was not me. That came in the, uh, the desk that I got, but I had to use these just because it had the dovetails. I was like, oh, that's prime, you know? My kitchen counter was a awesome marketplace find, freebie. Um, this was a solid oak desk. It was absolutely beautiful. Like I saw it, I'm like, oh, I gotta rip down and get it. So I drove down like late at night, met the guy. It was up stairs, two story house with a crazy stairway coming down. I'm trying to wrestle this whole big desk down. It was super heavy because it's oak. Um, but it was so worth it just for the top and I've used the oak everywhere like used the oak for the trim pieces and everywhere else in the build and the colors just sort of go together. It already had this really nice thick epoxy layer on it. I got a sink that I ended up cutting in half because I didn't want, I wanted more, um, I wanted more workspace area rather than having two sinks. So then yeah basically you know you cut the sink in half and you can mount it underneath couple screws and use a router you just plumb it out or router it out that way and it, it came out perfectly this is a this is a, just a showpiece basically it's a really expensive tap that i also got on for a bargain of a deal pretty much stole the thing um off a of marketplace so that's gonna go in like that this is the stove i got from the trailer still needs to be cleaned off the trailer was gross it was so moldy still got some of the mold trailer going on there um I'll do a good clean at the very end. This thing looks brand new. Like, I don't think the burners were even used. Super stoked. Knobs are inside. More mold. Um, this is the, the pizza box. Oh, this is so, yeah. This is my blueprints. Right here. Like this. Went home the one night thinking, okay, how do I want to lay this thing out? And kind of plopped it down on a pizza box and just kept it as that. And, Everything actually lined up perfectly. Like I got, you know, the couch here, the door here, little cabinet, shower, toilet over there, kitchen, sink, and stove lined up perfectly. Got the stairs and then the bed in the back. As we move on, the kitchen goes into this area here. This is where the bathroom shower is. I want to make the whole washroom area completely wash downable. So, you know, you can go in there with a hose or pressure washer and just spray it all down. I can't buy a pre-made basin for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually fiberglass the base myself. And it's going to come up probably like two and a half to three inches on either side and do a kick up. I'm going to round all the corners inside the shower where I actually, um, I'm thinking about getting this deck tread. It's like a really thick vinyl um, 
kind of a laminate or veneer. I'm not really sure what it's called, but it's just like one solid sheet and it's like a cold cure. So you just put a glue on there. My friends did their back deck on it and it seemed to be very waterproof. It's a new product and I think it'll be pretty affordable. So I'm gonna give that a go. And I mean, if it doesn't work, you can just rip it out and do it again. It's gonna be a hot water shower and composting toilet, kind of the two in one mode there. For now, I think the composting toilet's just gonna be a bucket which is pretty standard. Maybe have a little computer fan sucking out the stink. I got a free ping pong table and I've used that everywhere. I've used it for like underneath the couch there. Um, I've used it to make cabinets. So this, this is a corner cabinet that I made. This was a little bit trickier, but essentially um, the ping pong table is used for the top and bottom pieces as well as it's my defender here for, the, for that. It's, it's jammed right now just because it's, I'm still trying to fit it in and I got to build wheels for it and make it slide on a track. And I kind of, I like to cut the corners off because I think it looks a little bit nicer and adds to the overall space of the living area. Plus the fact is like, I always seem to hit my head on stuff that sticks out and you're always going to be coming up and down here. So it's kind of nice that like when you stand up, you're not going to have this big corner here that you're going to smoke your head on. This was the top of the uh, dresser drawer that I got the pony wall drawers out of. This part is gonna be used here. I'm gonna have it hinged. So it's gonna go like this, this is gonna be my desk. This is where I can have my computer and do my editing and stuff like that. And then just because, you know, it's movable space, so I can have the chair and it goes underneath. And if I want to, I can probably hinge it up so it just folds up like that. Extra space, more room. And it allows me just to sort of sit here. I can have the door open if I want to and hang out. Beautiful view, you know, the van lifestyle. Dream of working next to a waterfall or um, a truck stop. All the walls are thick, two inch insulation, just like the ceiling, that foam there. And then for the floor, I'm gonna use the high density foam that's a little bit thicker. So like you can actually put weight on there and it doesn't compress as much. That's what's going on for everywhere. So this thing is really well insulated. Um, right now my flooring, this is all just temporary in there so I don't damage the foam too much, but I'm gonna do a sub layer of plywood over top and then put down uh, this vinyl <coughs> kind of flooring here. As you're walking in and out, you pull in so much dirt and you know you can see it's a mess right now. Um, so that's again why it's the last thing I want to do. The walls are just flooring. People are like, oh you've done such nice woodwork and joinery, but it's uh, just the same crap that I got here. It's just kind of this particle board. Again, I got a bunch of free flooring off marketplace again that was a big win i got a big stack of it um i don't know if i want to i don't think i want to use this as a flooring just because it's like this kind of particle osb board which just soaks up so much water for the walls i think it's really good because the walls aren't going to soak up a bunch of water and it looks really sharp it kind of it's a it's a lighter wood too so it helps reflect everything you know kind of keeping this as like sort of a unique build i want to have like a bit of a feature piece here and this was uh my table or this is a table that I scored on the marketplace. Uh, it's like a solid two inch thick butcher block, um, like catering table. This is gonna go like right here like this. And the idea is I'm gonna actually have it like on an offset pivot. So like you can actually sort of like rotate into the corner and then rotate out. Still gotta sort of engineer that because this is really heavy. So if anybody ever wants to do a cube van, I really highly suggest that you get it without a roller door. Um, I'm noticing no matter what you do, this is like, I mean, it's just plywood. I think the door was replaced at one point before I got it. But um, essentially it soaks up so much water. I'm gonna, I wanna remove this roller door and then put in like two swing refridge doors that uh, bleed off the water a lot better. And I think they'll be in, like, I want to use these, um, I got to <laughs> scored another free door off the marketplace. Internet fine. I love that thing. <laughs> um, what I want to do is I'm going to chop these in half and then stack them. And basically I'm just going to put them on a piece of backing and then have two doors that kind of open up like, I guess the barn style. These doors are 16 foot doors off like a huge garage. Um, they are just like thin sheet metal over top of foam. So they have somewhat of a insulating value to them. And they have like a bit of a, they got like the seal and kind of a bottom groove on there to help feed the, uh, feed the water off. So when I stick them together and 
Good thing it's just like a ton of silicone to sort of seal it up. That's gonna be my like semi-permanent tempor uh, temporary door before I like, you know, find the, the proper piece to put on there. Cause I would love to get like just a door off a refridge truck. Um, but for now I'm just gonna use those cause that's what I have. This is like, you know, the garage. <laughs> um, this is where all the, uh, all the fun stuff goes. So up here, this is my bed. I'm gonna have like a pony wall going up. And then underneath this is like, I got a ton of room on here. I don't know what I'm gonna fill it full with, but I made it so I can like slide my knife longboard in over there and have a bunch of short boards and stuff like that. Um, you can put bikes and skateboards and whatever else, longboards, skateboard longboards um, under here. Um, I'm gonna keep my saws with me when I travel and all my other tools just so I can do work along the road uh, for myself and other people want to get those gigs you can see I got like all the wire and stuff hanging down so like I'm gonna have my electrical panel and charging stations here and my uh, my shore powers sending over there but it's gonna be in this corner here um, my propane tanks what I want to do is cut a hole in the floor and then between the um, stick a propane tank down between the two like cross members that go in there so I want to box it all in and that's going to be hidden kind of like underneath the vehicle so it can still vent to the outside, um, be nice and hidden. I have, uh, for power right now, I just have uh, four deep cycle batteries and eventually I'm going to wire this thing for solar. I, it, well, it is wired for solar, but eventually I am going to get solar panels to help power it up. I'm going to charge the batteries for now by just running the engine because I'm probably going to drive this thing around a lot every day. I plan on parking this at the job sites and kind of camping out there for a week to two weeks as I'm building a house. I work as an electrician for people, so. For the bed, the bed's gonna push up right against the pony wall. And then I got a bunch of slats coming here. I kind of want to make it so that this is all removable. So like, say if you just don't want to have a mattress in the back and you want to like use this space as like a bigger workshop or, you know, put motorbikes in here just whatever, and you're like, I don't need to carry on a mattress all the time. The mattress, you can ditch the mattress. This piece pops out, it's all removable, and then you have just like a way bigger space. I also scored a king size bed. And so this was the bed frame of it all. I got so much of this stuff, and I've been using it everywhere. I use it on my couch as well, to sort of build up the bottom frame and all that stuff. And then this is all the leftover pieces, so I made this headboard box. My mattress is gonna be up to here, but basically yeah, it just opens up like that, and tons of room underneath. I don't know what kind of bedside stuff you need to hide, but. This is a uh, aluminum box that I scored. I was had some plans for, I'm not sure it's gonna work or not, but I kind of want to like chop it in half and then cut and paste it over here. So it's like a longer, more rectangular box. And that's gonna go underneath in this corner, like, like so. It's gonna tie in, not tie into the bumper, but it's gonna come to the bumper and butt up. This is my um, multi-energy sourced propane electric hot water tank, which for now I want to just kind of hide within that box right here, like that. It's kind of at bumper level, so I think it's okay as long as I don't back into something and just pop it. Underneath here, this is the gray water tank that I got. I scored this tank. This was like a hydroponics grow tank that someone had for sale, nice and cheap. And I, uh, I bought a valve splurged on that a little bit just a regular rv dump valve i guess like that it's empty um i use strut electrical strut or plumbing strut this is used in the trades a lot i've taken this piece of pipe i've cut it to the exact um height of the tank and this is what uh this is a threaded rod it's called ready rod and i there's cross members that go above like um that just sit above the frame and that's what holds the floor into the whole cube. So this ties into the cross members, bolts right through, nut and bolt on the top so it holds in real tight. And then I slipped over the pipe like that and then bolts, then I bolted the ready rod to the bottom. So that holds the tank really tight and strong so it's not going anywhere. I did three of those along the whole thing, pan them black so it looks really discreet. This here is the water tank that I'm using. This is roughly 40 gallons. I got this off a boat of some old man. Uh, this was originally a water tank, but then the guy turned it into a diesel tank, and then I turned it back into a water tank. <laughs> I took it in, I got a pressure wash with like a steam cleaner, 
and then I just ran a bunch of chemicals, methyl hydrate, chlorine, all the works, you know. Um, made a whole sluice box of everything, give it a good shake, let it sit for the whole time pretty much it's been here. So I'm hoping that that diesel will kind of leach out. Um, the nice thing that it is stainless, so stainless is not very porous. And uh, unlike aluminum and steel, it'll actually clean the diesel out a lot easier. Um, I only did this because I know that uh, work from working on boats, people fill up their water tanks accidentally with diesel like pretty much all the time. This is not a rare occurrence and everybody does the same thing. You just kind of unplug your tanks and fill it full of methyl hydrate, filters all out. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, What's up, Jack? What's up, dog? <laughs> I'm converting this box truck for multiple reasons. Um, mainly for the fact of like, I mean, housing is crazy everywhere you go, and I'm tired of moving month to month as I'm trying to hold a full time job. So I'm hoping this would be a little bit of a better um, balance of things. But I kind of just wanted to do something different and got a little bit bored with life and wanted a bit of a challenge. This was like a real ambitious project that I took on. Um, it's been really fun and this truck came up for sale and I'm like, oh, that's kind of a cool deal and sort of just jumped on and didn't really plan anything out. I just kind of went for it and here I am. Total so far, I'm probably around $8,000 into this build so far. I bought this cube truck at what I thought was a good deal, paid about $6,000 for it. Um, the winning part about it is it had a brand new transmission put in. It was like a really good quality one as well. The build itself, I've been very resourceful in a lot of the materials I use, reclaiming whatever I can and making everything work. So, I mean, basically what cost me the most so far was insulating the whole van, which cost about like $700. If I had to pay for all this stuff brand new and you know, get pre-made IKEA cabinets and pay for all the plywood and stuff like that, it would be like, I'd probably be another four grand into it all. But been lucky, saved money on, you know, the, the couch, like foam pricing was crazy expensive too. And getting a free couch was like winning and it's already kind of pre-done for me. It's got nice cushions, cool texture. I gotta, you know, make up a little bit more and fitting it in all the extra time kind of gives you that headache. So, you know, it's that balance between, you know, punch yourself in the face rather than getting someone else to do the work, which probably should have done for a lot of stuff, but I like to take the challenge on and try to do it myself first. Really enjoyed building this thing out and it's really fun to kind of go around and find materials and sort of piece together a project I'm not really sure if there's any money to be made on a project like this Like if I actually took my time and materials in there if I sold this thing for like 30 or 40 thousand it would be like Kind of break even I guess with my time um, So what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna list this thing for about that price and if I get it that'll give me some funding to roll into a, a new project, which I'll be really excited to do. I'm building this out kind of as a concept of what I can do and using it to sort of challenge myself too and really pushing my abilities. If I had the funds again, I would love to build these really cool systems and water filtration systems and solar power systems. And um, I think that's all really cool. So I'd like to carry on with that. Um, so if anybody out there, you know, wants help with their van, let me know, save all that junk and I'll make it work for you. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to actually do a road trip in this van as well. It'd be really cool to travel across Canada even, or even um, I'm living on Vancouver Island, which has tons of gems. And this place is like, I swear, this is like the place to have a van. It is so many little logging rooms, so many like hidden places and gems around the place. And I want to see what it's like to live in a van on the island here and being in all these beautiful remote spots. Before this, I lived in a Dodge Caravan, which was kind of like my whole test it out, fill it up, can I do a van life kind of thing. It was a little bit small. I um, I found, I found the space to be a little bit um, underwhelming, I guess. <laughs> um, it was basically just like a, a flat raised up bed with a mattress on it, nothing special. Three tier pull out thing, kitchen. It was kind of cool, but it was only good for like the summer days and you know, the dream days where you take it up to the beach and you park it out. Basically I have a picnic with the thing, but I found it to be most like very unpractical most of the time. 
when it's cold and windy out and you're like, oh, I want to make a coffee. It's just easier to go to the coffee shop and do that. So that's like, you find yourself living outside of the van in other spaces more than you are using the van itself. And I found that to be like, still difficult to have a home base. So I think having, you know, going out, just balling out, getting all the cubic feet that you need, the ice cube or cube van. I haven't really given it a name yet. Um, so if you have a creative idea, let me know. <laughs> I don't like to plan too far ahead because I like to change plans. Um, so having a van is kind of nice because it's kind of like my own my own place. I can just pack it up, leave whenever you want, um, be nice and spontaneous. The crazy thing is too, is having this large of a cube truck, it literally fits in any commercial space. Like you could park it at in an industrial area and no one's really gonna question you about this thing, um, especially with being kind of like, no penetration on the side. So the idea is like, I have this sick ass van and it's like a big cube truck. So it becomes a big storage unit when you're not using it. Um, and that's the other better thing. So if I want to go traveling and take off on a plane, I can literally just like drive this thing downtown and leave it. Um, make sure everything's, you know, really well locked up and everything's just pile in the thing. And it's cheaper. It's still cheaper to have a Q van insured than it is to rent a storage container, which is, I think kind of crazy, <laughs> but uh, like literally just leave this thing anywhere and then just go and hopefully, you know, hope for the best. I don't really have anything of value of people like stealing my stuff. So like, I don't really care to leave it in my vehicle. If someone does break in here and steals it, hopefully they're like, you know, they can enjoy the place. So I use the tag Riley's Island for both Instagram and YouTube. I am currently creating videos on my day-to-day -day vlog building of the whole van. So it's gonna be start to finish. And then I'm gonna make like a really epic highlighting video of like the struggles and the highs and lows and going through the whole build start to start to finish um and hopefully roll that into you know more adventures if you would like to be featured on different media there's a form you can fill out to be on the podcast or to have your van toured and if you're interested in watching more alternative dwelling tours like this we upload every single sunday so hit subscribe and new van life and chill podcasts every thursday thanks everyone for watching